Hey, fellas. It's been a while since I've done the last build. So, this is going to be a little bit different than the past builds. Reason being is that those builds had this, you know, whole little stupid setup I had going with them. With the dialogue and descriptions and all. Those builds were also generally pretty strict, too. I would talk about maybe one weapon setup and a bunch of skills, but not maybe why I chose those things. Or I wasn't really clear on the flexibility of the stuff. They also tended to be builds I tried to make more unique. Something you wouldn't really just find anybody using. And that was kind of the point of those, but it made it hard to think about new setups, especially when I forced myself to tie them in with a character, which was another part of the uh, old builds. At first they were kind of fun to do, but eventually they got annoying to make, and that's a pretty good reason as to why I stopped doing them. So in turn, for these new builds, at least for the first few, I'm just going to start off by sharing some of the stuff I use on a normal basis, builds and setups that I keep as set skills, and I find good success with. I'll try to show off the main skills I would pick for that setup, as well as any other skills I would pick up if I were to shift the points around. With the weapon setups, I couldn't really think of an efficient way of sharing all the stuff I would use, since, you know, you guys would probably be interested in how I modded them, but for a lot of the builds, I don't just use one or two weapons, I use a whole good chunk of my inventory. So, I'll try to be as detailed as possible, but brief and concise as well. I imagine that these will be pretty dialogue heavy, so... There won't be as much emphasis on gameplay like the previous ones, but I really just wanted to cover a lot of the stuff that I didn't before, so bear with it. I figure unlike the previous builds where I followed like a, a type of script and everything, I'll just talk about the builds here and just kind of go with the flow, wherever it really takes me. A lot of people have been asking me to do more build videos, and with the re recent changes to the perk decks and the fact that I haven't done many builds since the perk decks and Fugitive have uh, been added to the game, I guess this is the perfect time to start back up. So at least for the next few builds, the, they'll be more like this one. But who knows, maybe I'll go back to doing the older one someday. So for today, I'm going to be sharing the Jack of All Trades build 2.0. Now the reason why this is 2.0 is because the previous Jack of All Trades build did not even have fugitive skills, let alone perk decks. So it's been a long time coming, hasn't it? Anyway, the reason why I like this build so much is because it is very balanced and is useful in many situations. Um, you're going to be helpful to your teammates, you got good drills, so any map that requires drilling, you're going to help alleviate the pain that is drilling. Uh, you have enough skills to stealth, you know, the basics, you're not going to have all the nice fancy stuff, but you're going to have enough. So, uh, yeah, let's take a look at the skill, shall we? Now, Mastermind, this is your team-oriented tree right here. Inspire, my favorite skill of the entire game, right here. Uh, handy, especially on higher difficulties when people die left and right. I mean, the thing about this game is people will die regardless of what they're using. You know, tank, dodge, whatever, anything in between. People will die. It's just a given. So, having Inspire is very handy. Uh, a ranged revive option. And it is very fast as well. And on that uh, similar vein, Combat Doctor for med bags helps keep people out of custody. I do prefer having these over ammo bags because with ammo, you can always pick up ammo off the ground. And if you're fairly conservative and you have uh, decent weapons, you're not going to worry too much about pulling ammo from ammo bags. Uh, most of the other stuff in Mastermind, I mostly pick up just to get up to these higher two skills. Uh, Dominator, a very nice skill. In case anybody goes to custody, you can trade them. And in stealth, you can dominate someone for an easy kill, or just an easy, uh, you know, so they don't shoot you or call or anything. Uh, Painkillers, very good with Inspire, same with Combat Medic. Uh, Endurance is a very handy skill to increase your stamina. Anything that increases mobility is a uh, plus in my book, especially since this is a dodge-centric build. So, uh, yeah, anything regarding speed and stamina, probably have it. Spotter, a nice skill. Uh, you know, both basic and ace. Ace, the version, will help you buy stuff in stealth. And same with Control Freak. Uh, the basic version, very nice skill. Very easy to get. It used to be up here, somewhere up here. And, uh, well, no one ever used it, but ever since they put it down here, it's a very easy skill to get and very handy on any stealth maps with lots of civilians. And, of course, the ace version, also very handy to have in case you want to buy, like, expert drivers so you can uh, get away from, or you don't have to do escapes, stuff like that. Cable guy, tying people, very nice. Kinky. So, yeah, this is uh, very handy to have, especially just in Spire, in general, for loud missions. And similar, on that similar vein, for loud missions, stun resistance, almost a must, especially on, like, Death Wish, because they throw flashbangs like crazy. And uh, quite often, you will die because you just cannot see anything and you're blinded. 
and you're getting shot at from all directions, or they've swarmed you and you just have no idea. So, uh, that skill, very nice to have, especially when going loud. Pumping Iron, Underdog, Die Hard. Uh, basically, I just wanted to pick something to get up to stun resistance. I do like Die Hard a lot because using your primary in Bleed Out is very handy when someone's trying to revive you. You help take the aggro and you can also possibly kill whatever it is that took you down. Uh, armor recovery rate, also very nice. Underdog, would be nice to get an ace but didn't quite have enough points to spare. Uh, when you're surrounded by three enemies or more, you receive a 15% damage bonus and when it's aced, you get a damage reduction. Pumping Iron is for melee, so uh, yeah, it's just kind of... Kind of fun to have. Transporter, everyone will tell you this is a must-have skill, so it's kind of hard to skip on in this. Uh, there are lots of bags in the game, so being able to transport them and throw them farther is always going to be helpful. Now, under Technician, uh, Drill Skills. Basically, Drill Sergeant, Hardware Expert, Nerves of Steel. Nerves of Steel, nice skill in itself. 50% Fit le less damage when interacting with things, which includes like drills and opening doors and such, so having that is very nice. Uh, Steel Sight will bleed out. Eh, that's kind of whatever. I mostly just picked that up to get to these higher two tiers. Hardware Expert, Drill Sergeant. Basically, make sure Drill's good. Uh, these are the two skills that'll make them, you know, increase their time as well as give you uh, faster restarts and, you know, that weird chance of uh, restarting the drill by itself when it breaks down. The only other drill skill is Silent Drilling, which, you know, uh, is not all that useful. So, eh, as long as you got these two, you'll have decent drills. In Ghost, I have, of course, Sprinter and Shinobi for that mobility like I was talking about. Cat Burglar, at least basic, is a nice skill to pick up because for a lot of maps with the uh, verticality, there's a lot of fall damage happening. You know, you're going to fall from the stairs or you're going to fall from somewhere and you're going to take quite a bit of damage. And while it might not seem like much at first, it eventually adds up. So, Cat Burglar definitely reduces the damage you take, and it, it's really nice to have. Uh, cleaner, you can buy the body bag asset, so if you want to do stealth, you can have that. Very nice. Uh, the only SMG-oriented skill in the game, SMG Specialist, uh, just one point will increase your reload by 35%. I don't really think it needs that whole increase of rate of fire by 20%, because most SMGs have an insane rate of fire anyway. Uh, knockdown from Martial Arts. I think I just picked this up because I didn't have any other place to put him. I mean, I could put him like Chameleon or Fast or uh, Dead Presence, but, you know, whatever. Fast Hands, of course, is a, another skill that is like Transporter. Everyone will tell you to get it. Moving bags is such an integral part of this game and making them easier to move, always nice. Now for the newer portion, Fugitive. I have Hidden Blade, which is the Shinobi replacement, and it just, uh, it's a nice skill overall. It increases your melee consumption by two, so if you're worried about your visibility, uh, this will just help in general. And then, uh, silencing your kills, so uh, when you kill an enemy in stealth, they won't make noise. Duck and Cover, a must-have for any dodge setup. Uh, when you're crouched, you'll just have better dodge, and that's really nice to have, especially when you're not sprinting all the time. Thick skin, just in case I ever feel like using my lightweight ballistic vest. Uh, Daredevil, because, well, since this is a loud-oriented build, usually I'm not going to be worrying about picking up Winston Wolf and Sixth Sense. Even in the stealth build, uh, these are just nice to have, and they're not really necessary anyway. And, of course, running gun, at least basic, just because that extra movement speed, very nice. And one of my new favorite skills, Swan Song. A very handy skill. Anytime you die, you have 9 seconds of invulnerability and infinite ammo, as long as you get aced. So, it's a really nice skill. Anything that takes you out, you can take them out right back. So, um, and it also comes in a pinch when, you know, you die and you, have gotta, you gotta revive your teammate or gotta do something, like make it to the escapes. So it's a very nice skill to have. And for the perk deck, with this perk deck, uh, Grinder. I use Grinder. Now, the reason why I like Grinder so much is because this kind of negates the need of mini meds, and that, that, that's really nice to have. You know, you don't really need to rely on upping your health with uh, someone else's equipment. You could just shoot stuff and, you know, s uh, sustain your own health. So it's a very nice perk deck to have. Definitely, uh, probably one of the strongest perk decks at the moment, even after all the changes. So, yeah, those are these skills. Uh,. I don't actually switch them up too much. I mean, the reason why the Jack of All Trades is, well, the Jack of All Trades is because 
I've already spread my points out pretty thin. You know, each tree has a little bit of something, and, uh, well, they're, you know, they each have their own roles. Like, this is team support, this is supporting myself during combat, this is, uh, helping shortening the amount of time you spend on a heist so you don't stay there too long. Ghost, for my own, uh, benefit, for stealth as well as, uh, movement. Same with fugitive, stealth, movement, dodge, and, of course, swan song is just a handy skill to have loud anyway. So this is what the skill setup looks like for this. Now, for the weapons. With this build, I don't really restrict myself to a certain set of weapons. You know, if I were running low blow and sneaky bastard, I would be obliged to use high concealment weapons. Or if I were, say, running shotgun skills and pistol skills, I would mainly be using shotguns and pistols. Um, well, I don't actually have shotguns and pistol skills, so uh, some of those weapons will not be used, but I still do use some of the shotguns and pistols. But yeah, like I said, I'm not really restricting my use of weapons, so for the most part, I'm using the majority of my inventory. <laughs> and uh, here comes the biggest problem I had earlier, talking about the weapons. Uh, I'm sure some of you guys would like me to elaborate and say, you know, I like, you know, this one in particular or that one, and then show off how it's modded, but when I say I use most of the inventory, I really do mean that. <laughs> Variety is the spice of life, people. And it's a quite a tasty spice, too. Uh, using the same weapon over and over does get quite boring. So I switch it up uh, quite a bit. So if I were to go over every weapon's modifications, I would be here forever. So if you guys think of a better way of, you know, doing this, uh, feel free to let me know. Because, you know, this is a work in progress. But yeah, I'm really just open to using any weapons with this build. Uh, explosives, I'm down to use any of them. Fire, explosive. Uh, you know, it doesn't matter. Any of the snipers, I'd be down to use. Rattlesnake, uh, R93, Thanatos, Repeater, Lebensauger, Nagant. Nagant's still probably my favorite sniper rifle. Uh, with the shotguns, I'll limit myself to the more powerful ones like the Moscone and the Jocelyn, simply because uh, they still only take about one or two shots to kill stuff. Whereas with these ones, you'll take one to two more shots to kill, and you'll have a slow reload, so... While these still have a slow reload, it'll still take about the same amount of shots to kill. Where was with these, without the shotgun skills, you'll be spending a lot more shots. Uh, that won't stop me from using, say, like HE rounds or fire uh, versions of these uh, shotguns, though, because, you know, HE rounds, very handy to stun dozers and stuff. LMGs, I probably won't use them with this build. I mean, this is a dodge centered build, so mobility is a big factor, and anything that impedes mobility is uh, not really welcome. Uh, LMGs are fun, but mainly for armor guys, you know, uh, they can utilize that whole large magazine capacity they have because, you know, they have the armor to tank a lot of shots so they can actually, you know, stay, stay out in a firefight, whereas a dodge user just kind of peeks his head out every now and then. As we have the assault rifles, I'm pretty much down to use any assault rifle. Eagle Heavy, AMR-16, AK-762, uh, the Gewehr, Falcon, <laughs> pretty much the entire inventory of assault rifles I'll use. And, uh, minigun, same as the LMG. I won't really use these too much. I will use the flamethrower, though. Uh, slow reload, but it is very fun to, uh, run around flaming people. And it works kind of well with dodge. Bows, of course, uh, these don't actually require any skills to use, so you can use them in any setup. Uh, mainly just, uh, weapons that you would use when you feel like using them, you know? I guess if I were to have to pick at least a few weapons that I prefer over the rest, I would say. Uh, the grenade launcher is very good for like stunning dozers and stuff. That's a must have on Death Wish. Snipers, I do like the Nagant, probably the best out of them. I also do have quite a thing for the repeater, but the Lebensauger is probably one of the most powerful simply because of its insane rate of fire as well as ammo pickup. Uh, with the shotguns, like I said already, these two uh, the high powered shotguns will be very handy for someone that doesn't have the skills required to use the other ones. Excuse me. As for assault rifles, I do prefer uh, the Eagle Heavy Rifle. I do like the AK as well. Uh, just the base AK. I don't like the 7.62 quite as much because it doesn't have as much ammo. Um, Lion's Roar, a very fun as well as uh, interesting looking assault rifle. I think I like the way it looks more than the way it functions actually. <laughs> Uh, let's see, let's see. Commando, very nice, uh, very balanced as well as, uh, it has a nice and fast reload, so that's kind of nice. AK-5, I just have a weird thing for this gun. 
Also, not too bad. Not the best assault rifle. There are plenty of better ones, but it's still very fun to use. Uh, the UAR, ever since they changed it, it's been pretty good as well. Of course, you could be, you know, using the car for, but, you know. <laughs> M308 and Cavity. Nice, high-powered assault rifles. Good for taking out snipers and stuff. Uh, gotta conserve ammo pretty well, though. But they're very fun. And best assault rifle, Amcar. Woohoo! <laughs> Alright, for our secondaries, um... The Judge, still a very usable shotgun, like I said. High high damage, but unlike the uh, double barrels, this actually does have a fast reload as well. So this is probably the most useful shotgun to use without shotgun skills. Still a lot of damage, and still a decent reload. Uh, actually, that goes for all of the uh, revolvers in this game. Without pistol skills, I will still use the Bronco, uh, the Mateba. Peacemaker, not quite as much. That reload is pretty bad, especially without Gunslinger Basic. But Mateba and Bronco, high-powered, they're, they're decent, uh, you know, not hard to use, and uh, they'll do you well without the pistol skills, whereas the other ones, you know, like, you know, my favorite Gruber, do you really want, do you really want to be running with a 26 damage pistol on Deathwish? That's a little painful. I'd rather stick with the six shooters. And uh, with SMGs, I have that one SMG skill, so pretty much all of the SMGs are open to use. Uh, anything you really want. I think my favorites are probably like Jacket's Piece, the Cross Vertex, high damage, a lot of bullets. Uh, Chicago Typewriter, not too bad. A uh, lot of ammo and pretty fun to use. And same with the MP5, actually. MP5 is also very enjoyable. So yeah, uh, that's pretty much how... I use my weapons. I could use an RPG if uh, there are a lot of enforcers in the lobby with ammo bags, but yeah, generally I won't. The bows, of course, uh, if you just feel like using it. And borrowing the uh, stealth-oriented weapons with silencers and stuff. That's kind of how it is with this build. I'll use a lot of different weapons, and uh, I do apologize if I can't quite go into you know each one's modifications and stuff, but that's, that's really how it is. For melees, uh, well, <laughs> same deal, pretty much. Anything, I'll, I'll be down to use. And throwables as well. It just really depends what you feel like using. For the armor, I stick with the suit because uh, that 10 dodge with grinder is much better than running the lightweight ballistic vest with a little bit better armor, but no dodge at all. That, that little bit of armor does not make up for the lack of dodge. So, yeah, that's, uh, that's this setup. So, as I mentioned earlier, this build is pretty much for me a general all-purpose build I can bring pretty much anywhere. Because of that, it's not really something situational that I only really bring for a few certain heists. It'll work well for me on basically any loud heist. What I like best about it is that this build picks up the slack that you may find when you play with other people. Like you'll say, oh, I wish someone had drill skills or I wish I had inspire right now. It really doesn't leave you with too much desire. With Grinder, you have the ability to self-sustain your health, and having a decent weapon synergy can keep you sustained with ammo for a long time without even using an ammo bag, like an assault rifle with a backup judge, one of my favorites, or say like a sniper in an SMG. Normally, when you're running on Deathwish, you probably want to bring at least one explosive weapon, or at least something that has the ability to stun enemies, especially bulldozers. Things like grenade launchers, explosive tipped arrows, or even the flamethrower. But, since you have Swan Song, it's not too necessary to bring something like that. I mean, you still could, but it's not as important as before. As long as you can protect your teammates, then you'll probably be revived. And since you carry a full set of med bags, you can always just heal up before you need to go into custody. For the combat portion of this build, it's pretty heavily reliant on Fugitive and Swan Song, but even so, having the small bits of everything else on the other skill trees is what makes this build great to use. You could be more gung-ho and in the front lines, or you could also play more passively, just focusing on staying alive and reviving teammates that go down. I guess another reason why this build is so much uh, fun for me is just, I love the sheer versatility of it all. Not only the skills that allow you to be helpful no matter what heist you're playing, or the weapons available to use, but also the different playstyles you can employ. This is pretty much my go-to build for pubs, and generally speaking, at least nowadays, anytime I'm talking about the versatility of something, I'm regarding to its use on Deathwish. Pretty much any and all setups will work pretty much just fine on lower difficulties and as long as you aren't inept at playing FPS games. The same can't quite be said for Deathwish, but I can guarantee that this build works just fine on that difficulty. 
there really isn't much more to say about this build. I mean, it's something that's very similar to what I've done before, and it's, well, it's quite, quite similar to how I've usually played. So, uh, you know, I feel most comfortable with this kind of build. You've probably seen it a hundred times before in the past, so it's uh, really no different now. Anyway, all that I've got left is just a few clips showing off how useful it is. So, uh, enjoy. Well, the district attorney. Yeah. 